Live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube. Covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. You're watching SiliconANGLE's The Cube, live at Splunk.com 2015. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, my host Jeff Frick. This is The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Uh, winding down day two of two days of live coverage of all the action here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. Our next guest is Tony Lee, Technical Director, Security Consulting with FireEye. Welcome to The Cube. Uh, thank you, good Fire to be here. FireEye, big company, went public, went huge, security, big money being spent. Um, but still, always in the news, you're seeing things, Cisco's, routers, you know, were compromised, things are being compromised, uh, you know, malware, phishing attacks. Um, what do you do there? Do you, you on the red team or the blue team? What team are you on? And give us a, give us a taste of what's going on in your world at FireEye. Right, so um, I'm a technical director for Mandiant, so uh, I head up our uh, our proactive practice, so uh, we do quite a bit of services at Mandiant. Um, so we have the, the uh, product side of the house, which is FireEye, we've got the services side, which is Mandiant. Awesome team, uh, both of them uh, generate lots of threat intel, which is uh, really one of our specialties. Uh, but I head up the, uh, the offensive security, internals, externals, web applications, wireless, and red teaming. So, <laughs> yeah, fun so job. take us through with what professional services means from a FireEye perspective, so you come in, train the trainer kind of thing, is it like you deploying, are you just setting up uh, modeling, just take us through what is that, what are the professional services that you offer? Right, so um, we do have the deployment and integration side, which is uh, truly the FireEye product side, uh, but then we also have the Mandian side of the house, which is uh, incident response, which we're very well known for, uh, as well as our, our proactive services. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we do have uh, product related services, but then, Mandian offers so much more. So what are some of the things that you're seeing out there, use cases that might not be reported in the press or articles, blogs, that are the threats, the state of the art? What are the, some of the uh, incidents that you're seeing, breaches, without you know the name names, but like what are some of the, the clever, smart, sophisticated, advanced attacks look like? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, we, we just released some information about the, the Cisco implant, uh, Sinful Knock, uh, that, that you had already mentioned. Um, we, we find that that's uh, pretty well advanced. Uh, you know, potentially a nation state or at least a well-funded adversary uh, would, would create technology like that. So um, the nice thing about uh, working for Mandiant and uh, working for FireEye is that we are uh, ground level, really. I mean, we, we, are, we are at ground zero uh, on some of the biggest breaches that occur in the industry, and we see things that nobody else sees. Well, give us some, give us some, share some data, color on that, share some. Um, so the attacker TTPs, or uh, techniques, tactics, and procedures, they're always evolving, right? Uh, so we see uh, new tools being um, uh, integrated into attacks, uh, you know, in particular uh, w WMI, uh, PowerShell, um, we just announced uh, uh, Forbes um, uh, adware. I mean, it's 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 ever evolving. So um, we we have to stay one step ahead of the attackers. Uh, but but the advantage of also having um, that incident response uh, uh, knowledge is that we can apply that towards our proactive services, our red teaming. So we can really emulate the adversary because we see what they're doing firsthand. So take us through the red team, blue team for the folks that aren't familiar with that is. Obviously, one's an offensive. A team that simulates the bad guys, kind of like you know movies you see, like uh, sneakers or these movies out there. <laughs> us, us geeks like to watch. Like yeah. Kind of dating myself with one of my favorite movies. And the blue <laughs> teams more defend, right? Yep. What is the day in the life of those teams? What do they do? They come in and they set up and they kind of go in the special room. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's kind of mystique behind it. So sure, you know, sure. We'll so it's the just like the movies. That. It's just like the movies. Everything you see in the movies spot on, right? I mean, it's it's uh, virtual reality and we've got all these screens and everything. Uh, not really, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not really like You have your MacBook Pro, <laughs> you bang yeah, away yeah, at some exactly, script. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just like it. Um, no, I mean, red teaming is, uh, is a valuable uh, service for companies because often uh, they may not know what it's really like to face the adversary. And, and what we're doing is we're prepping them for that, right? Uh, we are showing them what it's like to be uh, heavily targeted uh, to be specifically targeted, and um, it, it really is a no-holds-bar uh, sort of challenge for them. And um, 
I, I think after uh, seeing one and, and learning from mistakes, uh, they are more ready to face the real world. So right? you come in, simulate an attack, you do a post-mortem, they sit yep. there, they scratch their and wow, let's do that again. Yeah. So kind of like, you know, yeah. football drills, run the play again, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. keep on, keep yeah. on working on that? Yep, yeah, it's, it's far more than just a tabletop exercise, right? I mean, they're, they're seeing uh, the attacker TTPs, like I mentioned before, we see them uh, during our incident response. We roll those over into our, our proactive services, our red team, and uh, it gives the, the customer a great chance to see what the attacker's going to do to them, but it doesn't carry the same risk of, hey, all of our stuff is uh, exposed and we're, we're yeah. now on the front page, right? Are they generally okay with the red teaming and they, they bring it on, are they more like scared to be fired? I mean, security is so growing right now. I wouldn't get the sense of there's a job security issue per se, but what, is there some psychology behind that? Are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, there's always a concern that, um, you know, the defenders will look bad, but um, I think there's a bigger concern that if it were real world scenario, then they're, you know, that, that's yeah. a resume generating experience, right? If, <laughs> if you're on the front page, you're probably looking for a new job. Um, but, I mean, it, it's far better to have us tell you that you have issues rather than the New York Times to tell you you have issues. Right. Yeah, talk about Splunk now. Where does Splunk fit into all this? You got to Splunk the data. How are you guys involved in Splunk as a company? Professional services. What's what's your what's your involvement with these guys? Yeah, so um, I'm actually the uh, the FireEye Splunk app developer. Uh, I think uh, Splunk is a, a great partnership with FireEye because uh, uh, they're they're a um, they're not a competing technology, but they they augment uh, FireEye data. Um, so we are basically the sensor. They're the consumer. Um, we have a we have an excellent partnership with uh, Splunk because we do want our data to to be available for uh, for all of Splunk users, and um, it it enables event correlation really. What about this this concept we had uh, Christoph on earlier from Swisscon that that you've you've probably already been compromised and really kind of looking at the world from the point of view not that it's going to happen or you can really you can defend it you can defend to some degree but you've probably been compromised in some way that you don't even know yet. How does that change the, the tactic? How does that change the way that you guys work? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question too, because uh, I mean, you've read the reports uh, that, that most organizations, 200 plus days right. uh, before they ever know that they're compromised. Uh, so Mandian has uh, listened to the industry, we've addressed that concern. Uh, we actually offer uh, something called a compromise assessment, where we come in and um, uh, we do sweeps throughout the network and uh, we look for those indicators of compromise uh, that should uh, tell you whether or not you, you are in fact compromised. And then uh, if, if we do get a positive hit, uh, then you know, that starts the incident response process, the cleanup process, uh, but at least we have something that addresses the, uh, the concern or the fear, the doubt uh, that our clients have of you know, am I compromised? Right, and do you find most of the time with the new client, the first time you do that assessment, that sure enough, not necessarily a big thing, but you know, different degrees that, sure. you know, yeah, you know, you got a lot of systems, you got a lot of, you got a lot of ports to that system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, most of the clients that we have are, are fairly large clients. I mean, uh, if, if you have 100,000 systems or 200,000 systems, it's, it's absolutely impossible to have a perfect network, right? You're always going to have some kind of issue whether it's commodity malware or nation state uh, malware or some kind of advanced threat. Um, so to a certain degree, I would say, uh, I don't think anybody gets a clean bill of health. Yeah, and when you, when you define malware as you just did just now between kind of commodity versus nation state versus well-funded, I think was the other kind of subcategory, is, is that based on knowledge that in fact that is the instigator of this attack or is it just kind of based on how you scale things, small, medium, large. I mean, how do you come to those conclusions or you know, what is the standard there? Right, well, um, one thing that Mandiant and FireEye do is uh, we track the threat actors, right? I mean, we, we release a uh, report on APT1. I mean, that's the level of detail that we uh, track these threat actors. So uh, when it is um, one that we've been tracking, whether that's nation state or, uh, or well-funded adversary, um, we, we can categorize that based off of their TTPs, their techniques, tactics, and, and procedures. So uh, we do have a very good idea of, um, of uh, when we're looking at the attack, uh, who to attribute it to. Tony, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight. Love to get more data. Um, send us some info for SiliconANGLE and uh, we'll get some stuff on the blog, but I really appreciate you spending the time. My final question is I'd like for you to share the, to the audience watching live and then on demand 
what's it like here? What's the vibe this year at Splunk.conference? What's your takeaway? What anecdotally, what's popping out at you? What's the vibe? Oh man, it's great. I mean, there, there's so much energy at uh, .conf. Uh, everybody comes in, they're very excited. Um, it's, Splunk users are a unique, um, I, guess, I guess they're a unique uh, customer base because everybody's excited to learn, everybody's excited to share, and everybody's excited of what we can do uh, when we put our minds together. And uh, this is very much a sharing conference, so it's been a lot of fun. It's a sharing economy. We're living in uh, the sharing economy. You got Uber, Air Airbnb, exactly. and you got the Cube. The Cube is one big data ingestion. We call it cubing. Splunking? Are we cubing? cubing? We're yeah, cubing. I like that. So we're like, we're, thank you for sharing the data. That's <laughs> awesome. Just more and share it out back with you. We'll be back with more after this short break. Live here in Las Vegas at .com 2015. We'll be right back.